background to HIH insurance. In 1968, Ray Williams and Michael Payne founded a company known then as M.W. Payne Underwriting Agency. In 1971, it was acquired by a British company known as C.E. Heath PLC. In 1989, Heath International Holdings Limited took control of the operations for C.E. Heath PLC. And in 1992, it began floating on the Australian Stock Exchange. In 1995, CE Heath International Holdings acquired CIC Insurance Group, and in the same year, CIC Holdings was purchased by Swiss insurance company Winterthur Swiss Insurance. In 1999, Rodney Adler became director of HIH Winterthur. Prior to this, HIH Winterthur attained FIA insurance. It was owned by Rodney Adler. The Swiss Insurance Company then sold its 51% stake in the company to the public and changed its name to HIH Insurance Limited. There are many motivators that influence the corporate failure of HIH Insurance, starting off with pressure. The company was pressurised in overstating and misleading their profits as the company failed to perform well in the operational and financial activities. Moving on to opportunity. Taking this factor into consideration, the corporate failure was due to the lack of management and attention to detail. The main cause of this was due to the seniors choosing to reject the important information such as the financial position of the company. The Royal Commission also undercovered key information which had been deliberately hidden to avoid it from being detected from the board. And finally, rationalisation. The top level management of HIH were fully aware of their unlawful actions but continued in order to fulfil their own personal desires. The former Chief Ray Williams also stated that he was innocent and had nothing to hide. All three factors complemented each other, which led to the downfall of HIH insurance. There were several internal failure factors that led to the collapse of HIH insurance. The integrity and ethical values were compromised on several different occasions. First of all, Rodney Adler was caught falsely claiming he had shares and claiming them to be undervalued to the press. He also tried to deceive many shareholders and directors to invest $2 billion into a company he already had interest in. There was also Bradley Cooper, who was caught bribing senior officials of the company. And last of all, Jeffrey Cohen was the chairman who misled investors about an alliance with another company. There are also a number of external factors that led to HH's demise. The first external factor is the role of the auditor, Arthur Anderson. They earned over 15 million Australian dollars from performing work for HIH, 7 million of which was non audit work. This raises a self interest and a self view threat, and therefore creates doubts over the independence of the auditor. Another external factor was the doubts over the independence of the audit committee. Two of the non executive directors on this committee were former partners of Arthur Anderson, and one of these two audited FIA, who were purchased by HIH Insurance. The final factor was the lack of regulation by the APRA and ASIC, who did not do enough to prevent the failures at HH Insurance. The Aftermath So the corporate failure of HIH Insurance led to many consequences for both the company and the offenders. Ray Williams, the chairman and chief, and Rodney Alder, the former director, were both found guilty of breaching and deceiving their roles and responsibilities as directors. Rodney Alder was sentenced to four years in prison after pleading guilty for four criminal charges. He was charged for knowingly publicising misleading information to the government and stakeholders, as well as failing to correctly take on the duties of a faithful director. Ray Williams was sentenced to four and a half years in prison and both men were prohibited of leading the role of a director for a minimum of 10 and 20 years. More independent checks should have been conducted to ensure the ethics of the company were still intact, even at senior level. To prevent directors acting in their own interest, there should have been more independence of the firm. The firm should have made a conscious effort to prevent lack of attention to detail, a lack of accountability for performance, and a lack of integrity in the company's internal processes through the enforcement of specific internal control measures. As HIH used Arthur Anderson for his audit work and also other services work, HIH should have used a different professional service firm such as KPMG or PwC to do its other services. Due to the independence of the two members of the audit committee being at doubt, HIH should have, been, should have deemed these two 
as being not independent and then found two different non-executive directors to serve on the audit committee. HIH should have worked closer with the regulatory bodies, APRA and ASIC.